This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the MSI Prestige 16 AI Evo. Need more acronyms at the end of that name? Yes, you do, right? That's what tells you that it's the 2025 edition of the Prestige 16. So that's their business line laptop. Just so you know, if you think of MSI as a gaming laptop people, they have been making, well, business laptops for a while. Now, Intel actually provided this unit to us because it has their new... Core Ultra Series to H Series processors. That's the more high wattage, more performant processor. Not for Ultrabooks, more for mobile workstations typically, and for uh, thin and light gaming laptops too. So we're going to look at it now and find out how that performance is. But before we get into the Intel processor part of it, let's just look at this laptop as well its own thing. The Prestige line used to not quite be there in terms of looks. Now it may not be distinctive, unique looking compared to other laptops, but it's a good looking laptop. I'm the design cues are all there for a pleasant looking magnesium alloy, very light. I mean, 16 inches and you're looking at like three and a half pounds. That's, that's a pretty impressive laptop. Chassis is pretty good in terms of rigidity. The display hinges are like so. You can actually open it flat if you wish to do that. Though oddly for a laptop where you can do that, this is not a touch screen. It's also the glossiest laptop display I have seen in a while. We'll talk about the display a bit more later. So. That's an odd thing to have such a glossy laptop that opens flat and you can't touch the screen. So I like the build quality. Two things I don't like. All the USB-C slash Thunderbolt ports, USB-A, single one, and the HDMI are on the back, which means I'm constantly picking this thing up to plug things in and look at it. And the USB-C based 100 watt charger plugs into the back too. Not really convenient. The happy thing is on this side over here, we have a full-size SD card slot, yay, and an Ethernet, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, Intel Ethernet on board. And, well, of course, a headphone jack. Thank God we still get those. So that's the good stuff. And on the bottom, the ventilation grill area is huge. Oddly, only one fan. You know, it, it is an iGPU-only mo model, this one. This one doesn't have a dedicated... GPU inside. I believe there's an NVIDIA RTX 4050 model. Maybe this is going to be available, but anyway, so that helps offset the ventilation situation there. Now, one weird thing about this laptop. So this one says on the bottom that it is a pre-release laptop. Maybe the one you get won't do this, but if you pick it up and you hold it like this, it opens by itself and then you pinch your fingers. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Strange. The keyboard on this is actually relatively deep travel for a fairly slim and light business laptop. Uh, the keys are very stiff, so kind of old school. That used to be a great thing. You like to feel that tactile resistance. Now it feels maybe a little bit much, but I, you know, that's, that's personal preference kind of thing. It's not really a ding against the product, just so you should know. White backlit keys, oversized trackpad, normal stuff there. Speaker is pretty good, pretty loud and pretty full for something that is, you know, maybe multimedia. So, all right, we've covered the basics of what this laptop is. Uh, we'll get to the display part later, but the performance is the important thing here because this is a new generation of CPU. We have seen the Ultrabook level CPUs here, but this is the first with the H series just coming out now. So again, you'll see this in slim and light gaming laptops as well, not just in business laptops. In fact, it might be a little OP for something like this because this is probably more for your Excel jockeys and for people who are doing some presentations and stuff like that, typically speaking, you know, it's certainly powerful enough to do Photoshop and stuff like that. It's not as AI focused despite AI on the desktop logo and in the name and all that sort of thing. In terms of the CPU with 13 tops, that's a little low relative to some of Intel's, but it still does pretty well in AI tests. And you do have Intel Arc integrated graphics. It's the 140T that contributes also some compute power for AI. So, uh, But I would say that most of the time the CPU would be paired with a dedicated GPU and that provides a lot of AI muscle too. So um, it, it's great for showcasing just what Intel alone does, but maybe this isn't the one that most of you would buy who really care about that. That said, I don't know how many people are that into AI, but I know some of you are using it for stuff. So something to keep in mind. Being a current Intel generation processor, stack design, very modern, three nanometer, all that sort of thing. Power efficiency is good here. Now we do have a crazy 99.9 .9 watt hour battery, the biggest you can put in a laptop and still take it on an airplane, legally speaking, uh, which also increases runtimes. One thing that used to be a big complaint with Intel was heat, 
noise and short battery run times, the more powerful the laptop got. So they're addressing those things here and pretty successfully. The, the run times on this, this is an all day PC doing a mix of stuff, including some Photoshop and all that sort of thing. Not bad. And heat and noise, like I said, for something that has only one fan, which means the cooling might get a little high pitched sometimes, but uh, it, thermals are not really a problem. I didn't see thermal throttling running in the benchmarks. Other nice thing too is when running CPU oriented benchmarks like Geekbench 6, for example, plugged and unplugged, the numbers are pretty close. The multi core drops a little bit, but really better than we've seen previously from Intel while still having good battery run time. So we're finally getting somewhere with that. Now, Intel wants to compare this to the Ryzen 9 370. And I'm not really sure how fair that is because that's really a 28 watt processor. It's not an H series, which this is meant to be run at 35, if not 45 watts and peak it all the way to 115 watts. So this is more powerful and it has more cores. That said, and you can actually get this laptop with that Ryzen processor inside. This one does have better benchmark performance, both CPU and iGPU. In fact, you know, it used to be AMD integrated graphics was, was awesome, relatively speaking, for integrated graphics. Well, guess what? Intel has actually surpassed them currently. If you're looking at something like the Radeon 880M, it's good to see competition. I'm sure, you know, AMD will show us something this year that leapfrogs maybe this again, and that's what makes for better products. So that's good. But for the moment, Intel is really doing pretty well in terms of holding their own against AMD, and especially when it comes to power efficiency, heat, and battery run times and all that sort of thing. Uh, this platform has soldered RAM, so you're not going to be able to upgrade it. Our particular unit has 32 gigabytes of RAM, fast RAM. You do have two M2 2280 SSD slots. It comes with a one terabyte fast drive, actually, so that's good as well. In terms of connectivity, you have Intel slash killer Wi-Fi 7 with Bluetooth 5.4 on board. Two forms of biometrics. You've got a fingerprint scanner embedded in the power button, and you have a Windows Hello IR scanner. You also have a, a presence detection camera, so if you want it to lock when you walk away and that sort of thing, it can do that or just save power. Now, in terms of gaming performance, again, integrated graphics, so don't, don't get too excited here, but, you know, it does pretty well. If you want to play a 1080p resolution, you don't really even have to drop to 720p to play a variety of titles on low to medium settings. So uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good, right? I mean, you're looking at certainly surpassing, again, the AMD 880M, which is enough for handheld PC gaming and having some fun there. So that's good. And the 1080p resolution still looks okay on a big screen like this 16 inch. So that's good. 720p, not so much, you know. So it's got a little bit of game. And like I said, enough um, for doing Photoshop. If you're doing a little bit of Premiere, okay. Obviously, if you're a professional video editor, then you're going to want something more performant. Anyway, this is not the class of PC. How much is this thing going to cost? Well, MSI says they estimate around $1,600. So gives you an idea there. All right, let's talk about that super shiny display again. Why? Why is it so shiny? They have outdone HP specters for, oh my God, this thing is reflective. It's annoying. Stop it, MSI, please. Anyway, QHD IPS 2K 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. So 2560 by 1600 resolution, 60 hertz refresh rate. I'm okay for the kind of laptop this is. It's not about gaming and all that sort of thing. It would be nice though. A lot of displays are 120 hertz from competitors these days, hint, hint. It's got full P3 color gamut. It doesn't quite hit it for Adobe in RGB. It looks nice. It's 440 nits, which is mm, enough to largely overcome the incredible reflectivity as long as you're using it indoors. It's too reflective to use this thing outdoors. Now, looking at their specs page, it looks like there's going to be a 4K OLED option, which will also be super glossy, will also be non-touch, I guess, which is... Again, a shame. Uh, so that could amp up things a little bit in terms of display quality, which might be nice, especially if you're a fan of editing photos or watching 4K videos, right? All right, taking off the bottom cover, Phillips head screws. That part's good. Boy, tenacious plastic clips, not so good. There's some work to pry this off. Once you get inside, obviously the labeled 99.9 .9 watt hour battery there, stereo speakers surrounding, which is typical design. The Wi-Fi card is soldered on board here. Again, RAM is soldered as well. Two M.2 slots here, empty one, ready for you to put a second drive in, and this is where it ships with its one terabyte drive. And the single fan solution right here, and a big empty spot on this side where you can just imagine if you got one with a dedicated GPU, that's exactly where it would go, right? There you go, that's the internals. 
So that's the MSI Prestige 16 AI Evo for 2025. I like what, I'm, what Intel is doing with the new processor. They are going the right direction. Cooler, better battery life, and performance is about... 10 to 15 percent better than the previous generation they've leapfrogged amd again that's maybe not the most perfect comparison there given the wattage difference and the number of core difference and the integrated graphics are really a step up so that part is good as well i'm lisa from mobile tech review be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them